Welcome to my channel. For those who are new here, I'm a certified graphic designer. I've been designing for about 15 years now, and I've been selling my products online for about eight years. I've sold on Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and Amazon. In my channel, you're gonna find step-by-step -step tutorials on how to make custom t-shirts, mugs, invitations, and how to use the Cricut machine and Photoshop to design and bring your ideas to life. So a few weeks ago, I made a Cricut tutorial on how to print and cut this design and press it on a t-shirt. And a few of you asked me for a design tutorial. So today I will be going over how I created this design. If you're brand new to Photoshop and are trying to learn some basic skills, this video is also for you. If you haven't already, go ahead and download and install Adobe Photoshop from the Adobe website. I'll leave a link to that below. I'm using the latest version of Photoshop, but if you're working with older versions, that should work fine too. Once Photoshop is open, click on Create New. For the size on here, I'll be using the standard 8.5 by 11 sheet to print on, so that is the document size that I want. And one thing to make sure of is that your resolution is always at 300 pixels per inch so that it gives you the best print quality. Those are pretty much the only settings that I tweak when creating a new document. For everything else, I just use the default settings and go ahead and click on create to get started on your project. And I'm going to have a picture of the t-shirt on the side here so that I can refer back to it as I'm trying to recreate the design. To get started, I'm going to show you how to use Google to search for clip art. We are searching for images in PNG format, which means they have transparent background, making it easy to use the images as design elements to move around your Photoshop document. We're gonna start by searching for this image of Pikachu and Ash. So go ahead and type in Pikachu and Ash PNG. Click on images within the Google search results. Once we find the image we want to use, we go ahead and double click on it and that'll take us to the website where the original image is posted so that we can download the image to our computer. Once it's done downloading, click on this arrow and select Show in Folder. Then hold down click and drag the image file into your Photoshop document. Once you drop the image into the document, you'll see this rectangular bounding box around the image. You can drag the corners inward or outward to make your image smaller or larger and resize to your liking. Press Enter once you're done resizing your image to get rid of the bounding box. We are going to repeat the same process for all the characters that we will be using in this project. If you happen to get an error when you click on one of the images you find online, maybe the website or the image has been removed. Don't worry, there are plenty of copies of the same exact images in other places on the web, so just keep searching until you find the image you're looking for. Now 
there will be times when you won't be able to find the image in PNG format, meaning that it will have a white or black or different colored background, or in the case of Bulbasaur, it'll have these checkered square backgrounds, and you're gonna have to remove the background on your own using Photoshop, but it's a really simple process, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. On the bottom right hand side, in your layers panel, you're going to find the layer that contains the image of Bulbasaur, which is the image that we want to edit. And you're going to right click the layer and select Rasterize Layer. Then you're going to head over to your toolbar on the left hand side and find the magic wand tool, which is what we will be using to remove the background. Make sure that your tolerance is set to 50%. Click on the background and then hit delete or backspace. You can see that Bulbasaur now has a transparent background like the rest of the images. You can see the little marching ants box around Bulbasaur, meaning that the image is still selected. So you can hit Ctrl D to deselect the image and then hit Ctrl T on your keyboard to bring up the bounding box and resize your image. Now I'll be searching for and importing the last character, which is Squirtle, and then we'll be moving on to adding and editing the text on your design. One thing I forgot to mention earlier about resizing your images is that you have to make sure that the little lock symbol up here is selected so that your images maintain the same aspect ratio as you're resizing. Otherwise, they will not resize proportionally and they will end up looking distorted. After resizing, the last step is to flip Squirtle because I want him to be facing away from Ash. To do that, go up here to Edit, Transform, and select Flip Horizontal. We're gonna head back to Google to look for the font that we will be using. This is a Pokemon themed birthday shirt, so we're going to search for Pokemon fonts. Here you'll see a bunch of different results pop up but the very first one, dafont.com, is my go-to site for fonts. Let's click on it and download the font file to our computer. Click the downloaded folder once to open it. Double click the font file and click on install to install it to your computer. Your font is now installed and ready to use. Let's go back to Photoshop to finish up our design. Select the text tool in your toolbar and click anywhere on your project. Delete the text that popped up and type in your own text. In this case, we will be typing mom. To change the font, go up here and look for the font that you just downloaded and installed to your computer. The name of the font is Pokemon Solid. We're going to increase the font size to 200 points. Then click on the Move tool to reposition your text. We can see that on the original design, the word mom is actually behind Ash and Pikachu. Go over to your layers panel, find the layer with the text in it, and drag it below the layer with Ash and Pikachu in it. Hold click as you drag 
and let go once you're ready to drop. With your text tool selected, double click on your text to highlight it so that we can change its color. On the bottom left hand corner, you'll see two color swatches. Double click on the very first one to bring up the color picker option. We want the word mom to be the same shade of red as Ash's hat. To do that, simply click anywhere on Ash's hat to sample its color. Now click on the FX option down here on your layers panel and select stroke so that we can add an outline to the text. You'll see that by default, the stroke color is already white, which is the color that we need for this design, but you can't see it because the background is white as well. So we're gonna head back to the layers panel unlock the background layer so that we can work with it and use the paint bucket tool in your toolbar to change the background color to blue. Once you find the color you want to use, click on the paint bucket tool and then the background to fill it with that color. Now find your text layer again and click on the FX tool so we can go back to adding the stroke. Now we can see that the stroke is in fact white and we can change the size of the stroke if we need it to be thinner or thicker. For this text, I'll be using a stroke size of 15 because it's a relatively large text. The smaller the text, the smaller your stroke will be. I can already see that the rest of the text is not going to fit in this page. So I'm going to go ahead and resize my entire design to make it smaller. To do this, go over to your layers panel, click on your first layer, and then hold down the shift button and click on every other layer that you want to resize as you're holding the shift button down. Right now, we're going to resize everything except for the blue background layer. So I'm clicking on every other layer as I hold down shift. Once you're done selecting all your layers, you're going to let go of the shift button. And if you did this correctly, all of your layers should still be highlighted. If not, then go back and try again. Once you've got all of your desired layers highlighted, you're going to hit Ctrl T on your keyboard and that's going to bring up the bounding box around your entire design so that you can resize everything at once. We're going to type in the bottom text of the birthday boy using the same font that we used for the word mom. Resize our text. And up here in your characters toolbar, you're going to change the letting which is the space between each line. You can see on here that um, these lines are really close together. Before making any changes to your text, always make sure that it's highlighted. So we're going to increase the letting to 80 points and we can see that looks much better. We can also change the tracking, which is the spacing between letters. going to change the color. I think that for this text I use the same yellow as Pikachu. So again we highlight the text and open the color picker option like we did earlier so that we can sample the color that we want to use.
Let's add a stroke to the text. This time the stroke color is going to be blue, but uh, it's not going to be the same blue as the t-shirt we're using or the background. It's going to be a darker blue so that it can stand out a little more. On the original design, the words birthday boy are all capitalized. An easy way to do that without having to delete and retype the phrase is to just highlight the phrase and go back to the characters panel again and click on this option down here that says all caps and that will capitalize the highlighted phrase. And that completes our design for the mom shirt. You can create the dad's and the birthday boy shirts using the same techniques that I showed you here. Just tweaking, changing, and editing the text color, size, and font to fit your needs. If you're going to be using the Cricut to cut out your design, you need to hide or delete the blue background layer and save your file as a PNG file. To do that, first delete the background layer within your layers panel to make sure that your image is transparent. Then go up to File, click Save As, and select the format PNG from the drop-down menu. Go ahead and save the file to your computer. You are now ready to go on to the next step, which is printing, cutting, and pressing the design onto your t-shirt. I'll leave the link to that video up here so you can check it out. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know down below if you have any questions, comments, or requests. And be sure to like and subscribe for future videos.